Adam and Juliet were blinded by sunlight when they rolled awake on the morning of the Taz Fest. They slept with the back door to the van open the night before, the sun as a possible obstruction to sleep didn't cross their minds. Not to worry. Wow, would you look at that, he said softly, rubbing his eyes open. A beautiful sunrise served as the backdrop to an already surreal view of the conifer-encircled wilderness. He rolled over to face his lover, then wandered, naked, down to the lake for a swim. As she approached the water's edge, she couldn't help but think about her previous life as if she had recently undergone reincarnation. She wasn't sure what day it was, but she knew it was a weekday. If it was this day last year, she would have been clocking in for or just starting a shift as the client services leave for the call center of some mega corporation. The day would have dragged on, it always did, and those first shots of whiskey on the way home would have been a long way away. I couldn't even wait until I got home. God, I was miserable, she thought. When the water got to her knees, she dove in headfirst and started swimming. She didn't know where to or why, but her brain told her muscles to move, and they did. She made it halfway across the lake and turned back towards the shore. She treaded water for a moment and the realization hit her. This is my body and mind acting in accordance with the laws of nature, without the risk of coercion. This is the natural state of man. This is a theme that they all had to contend with often in conversations with believers in government, the idea that some individuals had to be coerced to assimilate with society. More aptly diagnosed, though, it was a fear of the unknown. History was replete with artifacts and current manifestations of kings, queens, courts, prime ministers, presidents, law enforcement, etc. Side of small tribes and scattered examples, no human being had really ever experienced the natural state of man, of actual freedom. If every move wasn't monitored or directly controlled, individuals practiced self-governance and governed their needs and desires to be in accordance with what was legally permissible. Oftentimes, at the peril of their own humanity, often at the risk of losing their soul. See, this wasn't really a physical war that they fought. Violence was merely the state's final settler of disputes. Rather, this was a metaphorical, an abstract, yet still highly visible war. It was a war to win hearts and minds, to save the few that wanted to be saved, the few that could be broken free from the programming, 